Hi everyone, welcome back to Let's Do Bonsai. I'm Scott Winard. Uh, today is going to be a, a busy day for us here because um, the other day Kay decided to come out and do some light pruning uh, in the garden, uh, which ended up with our the side of the house that's bushy with lots of plants growing away, and we now have this. All looks really good and well, but obviously very sparse. Now as a result of this work, we've inherited a couple more bonsais. The first bonsai that we're going to be uh, trying to make sure grows well is a Mexican orange. Uh, this was growing at the side over there and uh, Kay lifted it out, dug it up, and the root system was very low and shallow and small. So a few roots were removed, and hey presto, this, uh, this is what we've got, and it looks quite well. We've also got a white oak, uh, which has been set over a, a rock inside this bag, a lot of sphagnum moss wrapped around it to encourage root growth. Uh, all the top's been chopped away. Um, but we'll see whether it survives and, and whether we get anything from it. So that's the white oak. Then also this little fella that found himself in the bin, but uh, rather than throw it away and expect nothing, I decided to fish it out of the bin, plant it up into some compost and just basically see what we get. Um, we're not 100% sure what it is, it's coming up as a hawthorn on the identifier app but uh, I'm not 100% sure whether or not to believe it. That's the, what, the only foliage that we have on it so if anybody can say exactly what it is that would be great but uh, on the identifier it's coming up as hawthorn. With all that work being done, the soil is almost empty. Um, so I'm actually waiting for a delivery of some more Akadama, which is what was put in here with the perlite, and some potting soils, bonsai potting soils, some pre-mixed stuff, so that we can move on to repotting the five needle pine, the Picea glauca. Uh, we'll get on with that straight away because uh, we've got some update information about this tree and where we're at so uh, we'll be getting on with that after I've done my husbandly duties and assisted over there at the side of the garden see you shortly welcome back once again it's been a long uh, busy day here at let's do bonsai and that little side of the garden is finally finally done so we'll just go across and uh, have a quick look at it. So there's Pete just inspecting it to make sure that everything's up to scratch. And uh, we've put some sleepers in just to frame it all off and uh, so that the, the stone and everything stays on that side. And because we had a bit of an empty patch right here in the middle, we went and we got a Acer Palmatum, the garnet. Acer palmatum. It seems to grow up to a certain height and then weep, weep down. So uh, it, we're going to try and bush it up and make it grow outwards and uh, have this hollow emptiness underneath, but a nice flat, <coughs> bushy canopy. Uh, so we'll see how that gets on. So here we are finally with the pine and uh, as we can see we've got things growing out of the box so we'll get rid of everything that's growing out of this planting, we'll remove it from the pot and uh, let's get down and into the roots. So I'm working on this straight on the table because I'm going to use the tray that I normally work in to uh, to collect all this soil. Just try and 
take the, the bad stuff out first. Ugh. It doesn't seem so bad as the conifer, and we do have some nice root growth down there. Um, we'll talk about the uh, the roots within these pines very shortly because um, obviously there was a lot of uh, comments in the uh, in the last video regarding what I referred to as some mouldy roots um, and that's actually um, mycelium which is actually good for the tree uh, it helps feed the tree I believe um, pines and things like this when they're growing up on mountains and in harsh conditions they um, they feed back off their roots you know the roots uh, sort of rot away if you like um, and they create themselves this mycelium uh, fungus So we've got lots of nice new root growth, so we're very lucky with this. People thought that uh, I'd condemn this tree to death and we're not out of the woods yet, but um, what we'll do is we'll get these all nicely cleaned off and we'll get them into some nice bonsai soil and we'll also um, add a little secret ingredient which we'll talk about as we talk about the, uh, the roots. So all the roots uh, are washed out um, you'll see in there there's lots of fine roots on the inside that uh, is making up the mycelium uh, root system that these pine trees help uh, feed the tree so obviously I pulled all this out last time and removed it all but it's actually very beneficial to any root system really but you know the pine trees really use uh, mycelium as a as a, a an excellent food source so let's just quickly talk about mycelium so mycelium is the vegetative part of uh, of a fungus uh, a bacterial colony that will grow um, inside your planting it's uh, it's a mass of um, branching thread like uh, they call it hi-fi or hyphae um, sometimes they call it shiro um, and that grows within the root system and it tangles all the way up in and it helps um, the fungus uh, absorb nutrients from its environment which then in turn breaks down and helps the root, roots take up food and nutrients that the tree needs to grow so it's probably a bit like a symbiotic relationship uh, that's going on. Uh, I would encourage anybody that's interested to, to read up on mycelium and uh, roots etc because um, obviously it's been a bit of a learning curve for me. I had uh, heard about uh, roots um, rotting away and feeding the, uh, the trees when they're planted in the middle of nowhere or in uh, areas where there's no no natural nutrients or foods or whatever so the the way it was explained to me was the tree creates its own uh, nutrients by allowing its roots to rot away and uh, and eating them basically but then that is the case but it's obviously using the mycelium to uh, to help break that down it's it's that uh, that system that breaks down the roots and allows you to to use the roots as a as a food source as a nutrients for the uh, for the tree so hopefully that didn't come across too garbled it <laughs> it sounded a bit strange as i was saying it all um so obviously in the video previous to this i removed lots of that uh, mycelium and it was pointed out by a good number of people um you know that i could have totally damaged the tree in a way that was irreversible uh, the trees still live in and the needles look okay although they didn't grow very much this this year 
um, and we do have some new root growth in the bottom in the period of time it was in that other soil um, but what I have got is some um, mycorrhizal fungi uh, which is it's it's a similar uh, or a part of the makeup of the fungi um, and if uh, used inside a planting uh, placed for being able to be in direct contact with the root system we can uh, simulate the mycelium almost with this and promote good healthy root growth so I'm literally going to sprinkle some scoops of this over the root system and into the soil so some will stick to the roots and some will sit at the soil where the um, what the roots are sitting on and it should as it's watered create the food system that the mycelium would have created naturally so we'll just top up with some more soil now that we've added the mycorrhizal which I'm probably pronouncing wrong so we'll get that in and around the roots and then we'll add an extra couple of scoops to where the uh, soil sitting around the root system we will work it in so we'll add this into the soil that's around the roots and uh, my hope is this ingredient will help promote the roots to grow strong and efficiently and uh, replace the uh, the mycelium system that uh, obviously I removed previously this is standard potting mix mixed in with the leftover soil that I had plus uh, a good lump of uh, perlite um, I've been waiting for some soil to be delivered and it just hasn't arrived it's supposed to be coming today now after uh, being told it was coming yesterday and the day before um, but we'll just uh, try and work this soil into the roots it's good strong soil it shouldn't cause any any problems it's uh, you know good potting soil uh, it's from Westland this soil and then obviously we've added all the perlite in and mixed it in with the leftover Akadama vermiculite soil that uh, that we were using just previously So there's a lot of working in to do there's lots of uh, cavities within this root system but I'm just being careful not to jab the roots you know the danger of breaking them we haven't got as many roots in this system as I would like um, the new roots there's not many of them but there are some and it's just going to take a while, we'll look after this tree as best we can and uh, hopefully the tree will recover um, with the good soil and the, the uh, mycorrhizal fungi additive that we've added in. Um, hopefully that's going to help promote good root growth and possibly additional mycelium growing away uh, every day is a school day you learn something new um, when the first video went out uh, somebody commented straight away um, quite rightly too that uh, the fungus what I referred to as the fungus and the rot was uh, actually a, a vital part of the system for this tree and basically I'd condemned it to death by 
totally removing what it needed to live. Now it did continue to live, uh, it did put down some new roots and they were nice and white roots as we've just dug them out to replace the soil. The soil that it was in wasn't the total bad soil with the clay particles in but it did have some of it in there so getting it into this newer potting soil nice and rich organic should give this tree you know every possible chance of surviving we'll obviously do everything we can looking after it as best as we can and obviously I'll bring you regular updates to let you know how this little fella's going we will have to put some rocks on top of the soil to uh, bed it in because it's just not not uh, sitting in totally nice it's um, going to take a while for that to root back in and get some more soil is a bit weighted over to one side so it's tending to want to lean away but as we water it it should drag the organic parts of the soil into the gaps of the roots that are left and uh, hopefully it will bed in nicely and have a, a better time growing on so we'll just come in with some water for that now so here we are with the water now, we'll get that running through the soil. There's a lot more organic material than what we would normally be using, but I think in this case actually it's going to support this tree a lot better and we've got the added ingredient of the mycorrhizal and hopefully that's going to uh, help stimulate the growth of the mycelium and get this tree back onto the uh, road of good health so that's all coming through the bottom really well we'll just get it watered straight through and then we'll get it put somewhere out of the wind so it can't be blown about too much watch it thrive hopefully so that's going to do it for today for our mycelium education um, something we should all know really if we're into this type of thing um, but you know you've got to learn it from somewhere so there we go um, but for now as always I'm Scott Winard, and as always we'll see you again in the next one